بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم ایاک نابد و ایاک نستاین یو ایکسلنسی مستر ایمان علی رحمان پریسیڈنٹ آف تاجکستان ایکسلنسیز لیڈرز آف ایسیو ممبر سٹیٹس این ابزرور سٹیٹس ایکسلنسی مستر بلیڈمیر نوروف ایسیو سیکٹری جنرل ایکسلنسی مستر جمع کون Director, Executive Committee of SCO Regional Anti-Terrorist Structure, Distinguished Delegates. It is a pleasure to be in the beautiful city of Dushanbe for this landmark SCO Summit. This moment is doubly auspicious as it coincides with the 30th anniversary of Tajikistan's independence. We extend heartiest congratulations to the brotherly people of Tajikistan. I also take this opportunity to facilitate President Aman Ali Rahman for his wise stewardship of SEO during Tajikistan's presidentship. Excellencies, the 20th anniversary of SEO is an important juncture to reflect on our journey so far. From the watershed moments in 2001, SCO has come a long way. Guided by the Shanghai spirit, SCO has steadily grown in size and stature. Today, SCO cumulatively represents 44% of the world population, 25% of the global land mass, and 20% of the global GDP. Impressive progress has been made in strengthening SEO normative and institutional basis and in developing practical cooperation on SEO's twin, twin planks of security and socioeconomic development. While SEO has done well to respond to old and new challenges, the increasingly complex global environment and geopolitical tensions would test our resolve in the times ahead. For our part, we must resist any drift towards block politics and stress that peaceful coexistence and cooperation, not confrontation, should be the main drivers of global politics. Excellencies, the COVID-19 pandemic afflicted the world in unprecedented ways. In sheer human suffering, the cost just cannot be calculated. A staggering 4.6 million people have lost their lives. 223 million people have been infected. While the public health systems were overwhelmed, economies worldwide faced downturn and recession. And most of all, the poor were hit the hardest everywhere whether living in the impoverished South or the affluent North. For the first time in 20 years, the world saw a rise in absolute poverty. We in Pakistan adopted a collaborated strategy of smart lockdowns with simultaneous focus on saving lives, securing livelihoods, and stimulating the economy a very difficult road to navigate. Our social protection program, which was called ASAS, Compassion, helped millions of families to survive. I also launched a global initiative for debt relief to help create fiscal space for developing countries to mitigate the negative effects of the pandemic and achieve sustainable development. The advent of COVID vaccine in a relative short time is a miracle of science. We believe science should continue to guide the world's efforts as it combats the pandemic. Attempts to politicize the question of virus origi origin should be avoided, as it is divisive at a time when the world needs to unite. The, the vaccine should also be available to everyone on an equitable basis as a global public good. 
Excellencies, climate change is another existential threat that our planet faces. Mitigating its effects is rightly commanding the highest priority on global agenda. Pakistan's contribution to global emissions is negligible, yet we are amongst the 10 most vulnerable countries to its to effects, negative effects of climate change. My government, I'm proud to say we've initiated, initiated a flagship program of planting 10 billion trees. Our initiative for clean and green Pakistan not only aims to protect nature and rest restore ecosystems, but also expand ecotourism and create thousands of new jobs for our youth. We're also committed to shifting our energy mix towards a clean and low carbon trajectory and are projecting 60% of our energy to be clean by 2030. We continue to work with the international community towards comprehensive implementation of Paris Agreement and mobilization of enhanced international climate finance to achieve our shared objectives. Excellencies, as the world marked the 20th anniversary of 9-11 attacks, we are all reminded that the, despite international communities' earnest efforts, the threats posed by terrorism still persist. Associating one religion with terrorism has enabled far-right, populist, and supremacist groups around the world to, pro to propagate, multiply, and accumulate influence. In some cases, such extremist and bigoted ideologies have ascended to capture the state power in so-called democracies. The fight against terror should not be won if we ignore that these threats and challenges, the biggest of which is state terrorism, perpetrated against people living under foreign occupation in disputed territories. For decades, Pakistan has suffered from terrorism that was planned, supported, financed, and orchestrated by state entities from across the border. Outside the active zone of conflict, no other country has suffered more than Pakistan. We have suffered 80,000 casualties, an economic loss in excess of $150 billion, apart from millions of people being internally displaced. Yet our resolve remains strong. We will continue to be a reliable and a willing partner of the international community in the fight against terrorism and extremism. Excellencies, threats to international and regional peace and security is a vital interest of SCO. We believe faithfully implementing UN Security Council resolutions for peaceful settlement of outstanding disputes is a necessary condition for peace and indispensable for creating an environment of cooperation. Unilateral and illegal measures to change the status of disputed territories and violation of Security Council resolutions run counter to this objective. Such measures must be condemned and opposed firmly for being in violation of the SEO Charter and its well-established principles of interstate relations. Excellency, the most significantly, Afghanistan is rightfully the focus of our attention in view of the recent developments. The sudden change of the previous regime, which took everyone by complete surprise, the takeover, the takeover by Taliban, and the full withdrawal of foreign forces has established a new reality in Afghanistan. That all this happened without bloodshed, without civil war, without mass exodus of refugees, should be a matter of relief to all of us. We in Pakistan were fearing a bloodbath like it happened after Soviets exited from Afghanistan in 1989. 
It is now in the international community's collective interest to ensure that there is no renewed conflict in Afghanistan and the security situation is stabilized. Equally urgent priorities are to prevent a humanitarian crisis and an economic meltdown. We must remember that the Afghanistan, the previous Afghanistan government survived on 75% of foreign aid. With the removal of foreign aid, there is a danger of economic collapse. And this is the time to stand with the people of Afghanistan. We commend the UN Secretary General and UN agencies for leading from the front in mobilizing international support for the immediately needed humanitarian assistance. Apart from helping in the international evacuation efforts, Pakistan has extended all possible support and provision and facilitation of humanitarian relief. Going forward, we believe positive engagement of the international community with Afghanistan is extremely important. This is a rare opportunity to finally end 40 years of war in Afghanistan. This moment should not be squandered. It would be unwise at this critical jun juncture to spread negativity or indulge in mischievous propaganda as some spoilers sought to do. This will only serve to undermine the prospects of peace to the detriment of the Afghan people. For their part, the Taliban must fulfill the pledges they have made. And most of all, for an inclusive political structure where every, all ethnic groups, all sects of Afghanistan are represented. And this is vital for peace and stability. Apart from that, the rights, the human rights of all Afghans should be protected and they should ensure that Afghanistan is never again a safe haven for terrorists. As a country that has continuously suffered from the spillover of conflict and stability in Afghanistan and borne the burden of nearly 4 million refugees for almost 40 years, Pakistan has an abiding interest in peaceful and stable Afghanistan. We will continue to support a stable and prosperous Afghanistan. And we must all realize that the history of Afghanistan suggests that the people of Afghanistan fiercely protect their sovereignty. Afghanistan is one country that cannot be controlled from outside. Excellency's sustainable peace and stability in Afghanistan will also help us realize our vision of an interconnected, prosperous, and economically vibrant region. In Pakistan, we have shifted up focus from geopolitics to geoeconomics. Our new economic security paradigm has three central pillars, peace, development partnerships, and connectivity. Pakistan's geostrategic location as a natural bridge connecting Central Asia with South Asia finds its manifestation through the platform of SEO. Pakistan offers the shortest route to the sea from many, for many of our partners in Central Asia. I commend the initiative by the President of Uzbekistan to host the International Conference on Central Asia-South Asia Connectivity in, in Tashkent last July. There is no doubt that the web, the web of rail, road and sea and air links across the SEO region will usher in a new era of enhanced trade, energy flows, and people-to-people -people exchanges. This hard and soft connectivity will contribute significantly to progress and peace in the region and beyond. These trans-regional linkages will be reinforced by the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor the flag flagship project of BRI, 
which is making steady progress. Excellencies, as we commemorate the milestone 20th SEO Summit, I propose five point way forward. One, we must reaffirm our complete support for effective multilateralism and the, and, and the principles of the UN Charter, including equality and sovereignty of states, respect for ter territorial integrity, non-aggression, non-use or threat of force, and people's right for self-determination. Two, we must strengthen our collective endeavors, endeavors to mitigate the adverse economic impact of COVID-19 pandemic, including through the SEO joint, joint, advi joint advisory measures. Three, we must chart out a coordinated SEO approach towards, towards stabilizing the situation in Afghanistan, including through enhanced engagement to address our common concerns and safeguard our shared interests, steps to provide humanitarian support and ensure economic stability, and measures to enable Afghanistan to become a reliable partner in peace and prosperity. Four, we must advance the agenda of regional connectivity. In this regard, taking the process forward, Pakistan would like to host a conference on the theme Transport, transport connecti Connectivity for Regional Prosperity. Transport Connectivity for Regional Prosperity. And five, we must, recognizing the immense potential of our youth, explore all possible avenues for the increased interface and empowerment. Pakistan would like to host a conference on youth empowerment through digital economy. Excellencies, before concluding, I take the opportunity to congratulate my brother Raisi, President Raisi, as Iran embarks upon the process of admission to the SEO. I, I also congratulate brothers from Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Qatar on joining as new dialogue partners. I also thank Secretary General Norov on successful completion of his term and welcome Ambassador Meng as the new Secretary General. Finally, I congratu congratulate my brother, President Shafkat, on Uzbekistan Chair of the SEO for 21-22 and assure him of Pakistan's full support. Thank you.